On June 14th, 2023, The Last of Us celebrated a huge milestone. It's been 10 years since the original game's release on the PlayStation 3 in 2013. After the release of Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, Naughty Dog was split into two teams, something they've never done previously. The first team would develop Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception. Meanwhile, the other team would create this brand new original IP led by Bruce Straley and Neil Druckmann. The Last of Us was a big risk for Naughty Dog and Sony, who were riding high on the success of the Uncharted franchise, and anytime a new IP is introduced, there's always a 50-50 chance of it succeeding or failing. Since the original PlayStation, Naughty Dog had a pattern of releasing one franchise per console. Crash Bandicoot for the original PlayStation, Jack and Daxter for the PlayStation 2, and Uncharted for the PlayStation 3. At least for the time. This would be the game that broke the pattern. The Last of Us was released very late into the PS3's lifetime, months before gamers geared up for the next generation of consoles with the PlayStation 4 that November. Somehow the risk paid off, becoming the third best-selling game on the PlayStation 3 with around 7 million copies sold. It's difficult to not see why The Last of Us became a huge hit. Just like with Uncharted, The Last of Us is a character-driven story, but probably even more so. It also arrived during the height of The Walking Dead's success, seeing the importance of its characters, the raw nature of humans and their emotions, rather than the endless action of humans versus zombies. Both similar in its themes of humans being the worst enemy out there in the post-apocalypse. The long journey of Joel and Ellie traveling across the US, fighting through emotional turmoil as the two grow close in their father-daughter-like relationship, both need each other more than they care to admit. They are the reason why people fell in love with the game, the reason why it's still being celebrated today, and it's ending the reason why people are still talking about it. The Last of Us is regarded as one of the best PlayStation 3 games you can play. It's had a major impact on the gaming industry moving forward, been an inspiration for a number of games, and has amplified Naughty Dog's dominance as a developer. Yet, despite the importance of the game and its significance, it's 10 years later, and I'm just tired of The Last of Us. The Last of Us is by no means a bad game. It deserves its praise and the awards it's received. It's a game you should play at least once for the experience alone. But the problem with The Last of Us is that it's been resold and retold so many times. In the span of 10 years, we've had four iterations and variations of it. The Last of Us is not a series that has had much opportunity to grow. We've only expanded its universe with a prequel comic, the Left Behind DLC to the original game, and later a sequel, but somehow it feels like there has been so much to the series. I guess Sony and Naughty Dog are just that good at promoting the games. It all starts with the original PlayStation 3 release, which is no issue at all. This is where everything begins, where The Last of Us is born. It made the PlayStation 3's final year memorable. Then, in 2014, we received The Last of Us Remastered, also a very important release since the PlayStation 4 isn't backwards compatible. It's the perfect excuse to get people who played and loved the original release to purchase again, and then a whole new audience and console generation of gamers who want to play the game because of the original positive reception. Logically, it made sense for the release. And for a number of years, the only thing to look forward to was the game's highly anticipated sequel, The Last of Us Part II probably one of the biggest and most controversial games to come out in recent memory, and not because of its excessive gore and violence. But I really like The Last of Us Part II. In fact, I actually like it more than the original. Its story didn't go the way anyone was expecting, but that's what I like about it. It defied expectations. It took risks, risks that pissed a lot of people off, but that's what's good about the game. Your emotions played a huge part in the experience. Then there's The Last of Us Part 1 for the PlayStation 5 and its infamous PC port. And for me, this is where the issue comes in. It's the weirdest, bizarre, most unneeded remake out there, and it seems so many others agree. Games like Resident Evil 2, 3, and 4, Shadow of the Colossus, Final Fantasy VII Remake even though it's part remake part not, these are games that benefited from a remake, being generations old with stiff controls or outdated graphics. Remaking these brings new life to these Asian games and brings fans old and new to play these games with updated controls and new graphics. Whether that be a one-to-one -one remake or, better yet, my favorite, a reimagining of the original game. 
The Last of Us was 9 years old when the remake came out. It might seem like a lot of time, but again, it came out near the end of the PS3's lifetime. The game still looks decent going back to it and plays well. Really, its PS4 remaster is where the game shines its best, and it can be played on the PlayStation 5 through backwards compatibility, making it easily accessible. But besides a few improvements in The Last of Us Part 1, it's hard to justify its necessity. It feels like Sony just jumped on the bandwagon because everyone else would find success with their remakes and Sony need to cash in on one of their biggest franchises. Not everything is bad about the remake. Its Part 1 subtitle lines up better to The Last of Us Part 2. The game's graphics and environments look absolutely gorgeous. Character models have been upgraded with more expressions added to their performances. Tess has had the most significant redesign and actually looks better and closer in age to Joel as she should. The Doctor in the finale is changed to Abby's dad from Part 2 for better consistency. The only decent argument to come out of Part 1 is its accessibility features. Whether you use them or not, they are important, and the ability to bring in people who couldn't play the previous releases is also important. But unless you have nostalgia for the game, or have somehow never played it before, there isn't anything new or entirely exciting to pull in players. I'm not sure any of these decent aspects can actually justify the remake's creation. In fact, the release actually takes away from what was there before and increases the price to a full $70. While the Left Behind DLC is included, there is no factions multiplayer of any kind. Gameplay improvements introduced in The Last of Us Part 2 you think somehow would be implemented are absent, and ultimately The Last of Us Part 1 feels and plays like a remaster with a new updated skin. One thing is clear though, this was purely made for profit. Which brings us to the fourth, and hopefully the final time The Last of Us will be retold, the 9 episode HBO show. If you played the game, you know what to expect within the show. It does alter and expand upon certain story elements, but doesn't venture too far from its main premise, which may or may not be a good surprise for longtime fans. When it comes to the remake, it sort of acts as a tie-in game similar to what we used to see all the time with movie video game adaptations. You saw the show, now play the game that made it all possible. And all of The Last of Us games, The Last of Us Remastered, The Last of Us Part 2, and The Last of Us Part 1 saw a significant boost in sales when the show was airing. So it's clear what The Last of Us Part 1's purpose was. For me, the remake is what killed the significance of The Last of Us's story. Something meaningful was retold one too many times, like remaking an iconic movie that doesn't live up to the magic of the original. I can't fault the show for retelling its story. It's a good story that was able to successfully be shown to a bigger audience who doesn't play video games. Naturally, we should expect adaptations to have the same or similar story. And yes, it is my choice to have played each version and watch the show. It was my choice to purchase The Last of Us Part 1 at full price on launch, even more so with the Firefly edition. Though honestly, this is probably Sony's intention, or I should say expectation, for those of us who enjoy the series. By this point, it's like this. Can The Last of Us be more than its first story? Can it grow into something more, or will the series always be tied down? As we all know, remakes are currently trendy, but The Last of Us Part 1 may be part of an even newer trend, unnecessary remakes. Rumor has it Sony is possibly remaking or remastering, depending on the news outlet you see, Horizon Zero Dawn, a 2017 game originally released on the PlayStation 4. Though a remaster makes more sense, I wouldn't be surprised if this was actually a full-on remake. Further reports say Ubisoft has plans for an Assassin's Creed Black Flag remake, though it's in the early stages and won't be out for a number of years. It's one of the most beloved games for fans of the series, but like The Last of Us, a game that was released in 2013. It was even a launch PlayStation 4 game and can be played on the PlayStation 5. But Ubisoft knows this is the game people love. It even led to a spiritual successor called Skull and Bones that will be released at some point. It's frustrating because if companies start to do this, it may give remakes a bad name, especially if released at full price, possibly diluting the surge of remakes of games people actually want. It locks in nostalgia and doesn't let a franchise grow and try something new. I hope for The Last of Us that the HBO show is the last time we ever hear of its story. No more re-releases, no retellings, and please don't try to repeat its story into something like a graphic novel, book, or animated series of some sort. It's time for us to move on with the series and its overall story. I want to see what's next. We know the new Factions multiplayer is coming out sometime. 
Season 2 of the HBO show will adapt The Last of Us Part 2 over a number of seasons, which may still be a while till we see it, and it would be shocking if Sony and Naughty Dog doesn't put out The Last of Us Part 3, because we all know they won't just stop at Part 2, but likely expect it at the end of the PS5's lifetime. The Last of Us is a big world with a lot of potential and has become a money maker. There are so many stories to be told instead of the original over and over again. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. With The Last of Us' story being told so many times, did it ruin it for you? Please be sure to like and subscribe for future content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.